What's up guys, it's Sean from Window Tint Warriors and today I'm gonna to show you how to take apart the wing and tint the back window on a new body style hatchback Civic. Um, this one isn't the Type R, so we don't have the crazy wing here, which makes it a little bit easier, but I'll show you guys how to take off this wing. We gotta take off the windshield wiper. All this has to come off. Very easy, but there's a lot of parts to it. So let's get started. To take all these pieces off, we're gonna need a few tools. I got a 10 millimeter, an eight millimeter, a hook tool, and a paddle popping tool. First step, take the screen off, it pops forward, pops off here, very simple. Place it there. Then we got two clips here, these two covers, and these two rubber bumpers, we gotta take those off first. The clips, we'll take the hook tool, go in the side, pop the center up, pull the whole clip out. Remember where you place these. These are the only two clips, so you really can't mess that up. But everything else, it's a little complicated. The rubber bumpers are a little hard, so we'll do those after. We'll start with the uh, plastic here. We'll take the gasket jamming tool, push it in the center point here and work our way across and it kind of just pops off. But the main thing you want to worry about is getting the tool in there and pushing these clips back and it'll fall right down. And now the rubber bumpers. These are in there with some really weird clips that I've never seen before. Um, it is a little bit of a pain. You do kind of got to force it off. I'll stick the trim tool or the gasket jamming tool in one side and I'm gonna have to show you guys this kind of when I get it down because it's hard to show because it's so high up exactly what I'm doing. All right guys, I just turned on the AC because I was sweating, getting all aggravated, taking these rubber pieces off. This is gonna be the hardest part. So hopefully you can hear me okay. It should be all right. Got a lav mic on now, so we are good to go. Right, Jimmy? Yes. All right. His name's not really Jimmy. That's just what I call him. So I took the one rubber piece off. Let me explain how it comes off. So it has these weird clips that you probably never ever see again. And it has these little prongs on the side. So what I do is as I have the, uh, the gasket stick right here, I'll take the hook tool and I'll just push these clips in one at a time. And when you push the sides in, it releases, and you gotta work your way across. So let's do that on this one and get this panel down. You kinda have to be a little aggressive with it, and you don't wanna use any metal tools because you will damage the uh, plastic around it. Once you get one release, it becomes a lot easier. Kind of. Not really. Bam, bam, done. Make sure you keep these on each side. You will figure it out if you mix match them, but it's one each side, they're specific to that side. And then we have two 10 millimeter bolts on each, one, one on each side. I'm going to pop those off quick. These are all the same and they're the only ones that are gonna be like this, so you can put them in a group. And after we got those off, we'll take all the eight millimeters off of the side here. There's four on each side. And they are all the same. Once we have all that off, we're gonna start taking the surrounding panels off. You have to take the bottom off first, then these two side sections, and then the top comes off, technically the bottom. So we'll go ahead and grab this in the center. You can use a gasket or a gasket jamming tool just to grab it, get a hand on it, and you wanna release it right here. So you wanna hold close to that. You don't wanna hold over to your left and pull there to try to release this. You wanna get close to it so they don't break anything.
We'll just put that panel down here. And then the sides simply pull away. And then on the top, or on the bottom half section, you gotta kind of roll it away because it clips in the top there and then it clips in the bottom. So this clip, you wanna just pull out and then it'll fall out of place. Same thing on this side. This is down. Now we can take the whole top section, grab it on the corners, give it a little yank in the center. Let's work it off. And it comes right down. All it is is a bunch of clips. You just gotta release those, put it to the side. So next thing we have to do is, we're gonna have to take this motor off for the windshield wiper, but let's take the tail lights off first. You gotta unplug them. It's just a simple tab and release that. And then this piece just slides right off. So it slides on the clip. Don't try to yank it off, just slide it and it'll come right out. And there's another eight millimeter up in here that holds the tail light in place. Make sure you don't lose it because it can fall down here and it's gone forever. It's gonna be a silver eight millimeter. We'll take this one out. And then we'll do the same thing. Unplug it and slide it forward. We'll slide it towards you and that's out. And then we can just take the tail light out. Just grab it firmly and one swift motion comes right off. And once we have that off, we have to take this piece off to be able to get the other screw for the wing that's really in the way. And to get the wing off, we gotta take the motor off for the wiper. Well, let's take this part off first and we'll move from there. So to take this off, we already took the two eight millimeters off on each side. And then we have a center, two, two 10 millimeters. I believe they are. Yep, two 10 millimeters in the center. Once we have those off, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. We'll close it. And this is a little trick that I've done. The way I take this off, I kind of leave everything in place and then unplug one thing. Cause you wanna have the button still there. If you don't have the button, you won't be able to open the back. So you gotta leave the button there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab it from the side here. Make sure you took all the screw off, screws off. We'll pop it back. Usually a lot of stuff falls out of this really dirty and just work our way to the center. And once we have this away, if you look down here, we have this cable. The one we're gonna unplug is the gray one, but I wanna loosen up the tension here, so I'll re remove this. This is the switch. And to take the switch out, there's a little tab on the driver's side of the car that you're gonna push down and push the switch in, let it fall, twist it, and it comes right out. So to get this plug undone, you use the hook tool. You're gonna to pry up this section of the gray clip and pull out the black one. Once that's released, you can take this and put it to the side. And you're probably gonna to wanna to wash your hands after doing that. All right, so since we have the trunk closed, we'll move forward with taking the wiper off and uh, take it from there. You gotta remove this cap, lift it up, pull it straight out here and this is a 10 millimeter so what I'm gonna do is instead of using the impact gun that I have I'm just gonna use a socket so that I don't damage the window because the last thing you want to do is vibrate glass you just break that loose take the nut off lift the wiper up give it a little wiggle and it comes right off now once that's off we have to take this plastic cap off and then we got this big nut on there, and I just use a pair of vice grips, put it to the size, grip it up, twist it. It's never really too tight. Careful not to slip up. Once you get it loose, you can kind of do it by hand. I'll put that to the side, take this off, the piece of metal, and make sure you keep them like this so you remember how they go. So now since the wiper is disconnected, we can go ahead and pull the motor down. We'll disconnect the motor. 
and at the same time we'll disconnect this plug right here because that's going to come off with the wing itself so to take the motor off we got three 10 millimeters we're going to hold it on the last one and uh, one thing to pay attention here is there's this little washer right here you want to make sure that this stays on this side and it doesn't go on the other side so now the reason we had to take the motor off is because there's another 10 millimeter <laughs> there's another 10 millimeter behind the motor that holds that whole wing on other than the sides so we're going to take that off and this one is uh very unique because it has a washer built into it so you know it's the center one for this so we'll go ahead and take the 10 millimeter back on the outside because we have four more to take off two on each side of the wing we'll go ahead and put those to the side and now since we unplugged the plug that's on the wing for the brake light already we can go ahead and just pop it off now the style of clip that's in the center here is kind of like a screw in a plastic grip so you just got to pop it out one swift movement movement sometimes you got to loosen it up side to side or you can stick a trim tool under there and it just goes in that plastic groove you want to be very careful that that screw doesn't hit any of the painted areas so it's good to have a helping hand when you're doing it for your first time now that we have both sides released we're going to lift it up and there'll be a grommet here a very dirty grommet so to release that you just push it in and pull from the outside and then we can just reinsert that later now we're ready to start prepping this window and we can put the dryer sheet on and shrink it up all right guys on the honda civic hatchback we have here on the dap if you guys are going to do a pre-cut come check this out so on the pre-cuts you have the cutout for the sides of where the uh, wiper is I like to remove these side wings just because it makes it easier to shrink so we can go ahead and edit this pattern if you guys have that you can do this if you don't you should get it bam just like that we cut it out and we can go ahead and plot this pattern out go ahead and cut this out now if you're using a pre-cut or if you're even hand shrinking or hand cutting, you want to make sure when you cut it before you shrink it, it's as tight as possible. Unless you're pull shrinking, then that's another story, but we're not going to get into that. Um, if you're doing a pre-cut, you want to make sure that the excess material around the edge is very close because on the bottom, it's kind of like shrinking a beetle back window. It gets very tight and tends to overheat quickly when you're trying to shrink it because it's so much material trying to shrink. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that on the back window. So let me just trim this out. I'm practically cutting it on the line for the pre-cut. Because if you have the extra clear, that tends to burn before the tint does and it causes more problems. So when I lay the film on the back window after taking a wing off, I lay it a little bit higher, about an inch higher than where it should be because the bottom, like I said before, a lot of material ends up getting down here and you have a lot to shrink. So if you shift it up a little bit, it makes it a little easier. And then what I'll do after I shrink it is I'll spray water wet mounted in place, exactly in place, and then shrink those remaining high tension points where fingers pop up. Now when I'm doing an H pattern, I'm mounting the H a little bit lower too, so more material goes up than down, making the bottom easier to shrink. Grab my felt card, and we'll get shrinking. So when I shrink it, I like to get the sides kind of mounted down so it doesn't go sideways. And then once I'm about a quarter there or halfway there from what the fingers are existing I'll start moving 
across the top of the bottom. And the same thing when I get to here, I like to get these down so they don't go sideways because that could cause problems during installation. See how I'm splitting it as I heat it, getting it to evenly heat, not even pushing it yet, just letting it shrink a little bit. I'm gonna get this about 90% and then I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit, start on the other side, because it can tend to overheat a little bit. Get the center shrunk. You can see right here, the clear overheated a little bit and it causes that little pinch. So what the, the clear will do, if you have excess clear like this with a pre-cut, it'll kind of crunch up and pull the remainder of the tint. So you kind of want to stay at the top with the heat and push it right down. So I'm going to do that with the gold card to get that to stick in place. Heat push. It. Let's go on the other side to finish this off. So the passenger side was a lot easier to shrink. Maybe less tension over there. It's all in the how you do the H pattern. So the top is fairly straightforward, just like any other vehicle. Getting that top corner to mount it first and then moving across back to the beginning. So we'll finish this off and then release it, wet mount it, and work out any other fingers that pop up. We can get this window installed. Now we can pull it down and finish shrinking that top half. This is doing two things. We're getting the remainder of the fingers and we're also cooling the glass down a bit because it does tend to get hot on the bottom from all that heat from shrinking the small area. So we'll pull it down into place, line it up as close as you can, nothing crazy. Mount it in place with the H pattern and then squeegee it out as it was shrunk so it falls into place. You see the top, we'll have to wet shrink that. Same as the bottom. Have the final fingers down there. Wet shrinking is a completely different animal. You gotta be a lot more careful because you can burn the film or crease it a lot easier if you don't heat it enough or you don't push it quick enough or you heat it too much. It's definitely an acquired skill. It just takes a little bit of practice. If you're just starting off, I would recommend not wetting the film, just kind of lifting it up, putting it back in place, down lower, and dry shrink it. Because you can completely ruin all that work that you just did with that little bottom wet shrink. If you are wet shrinking though, you want to spread the fingers out as much as possible. Not overheat it. Definitely a lot more tension on this side. That glass is hot. Let's finish shrinking the top quick and we're good to go. Notice when I'm wet shrinking, I'm using the gold card. You can't really, I mean, I'm sure you can wet shrink with the felt card, but the gold card really gets all the water from between the film and the glass out. And this top wing does get a little annoying. Well, you can make it work. Pretty good. The more it's laid down nice and flat, the easier the final squeegee will be because you have nothing pop up. 
But typically on these, you do have a few things pop up that you just gotta heat from the outside and push out from the inside. So what I like to do with this back window, instead of leaving it on here and have the potential of dirt dripping on this onto here when we pull the liner, I'm gonna mount it on this door over here. So I'll open it, spray it down, give it a quick wipe down, make sure it's nice and clean. Obviously if the car was very filthy, you would wanna wash it beforehand to eliminate any contamination. So we'll wet the film up, we wet the door up, and the way we're gonna to wanna to mount it is so that we can grab it, we're gonna lay it on the door like this. So we'll take it up, put it on. That way when we grab it, we're gonna be grabbed from here so that when we put it in, it'll all fall into place. You'll see it happen. If I try to explain it, I get too detailed, as you can tell. So we'll pop this off. Lay it on just like we took it off with the bottom facing back. We'll mount the top, actually hang the top over so nothing can drip into it. And we're gonna mount it right there. Oh, I gotta take a breath. <sighs> Thank you, Apple. Once we have the film off of the back window onto the door so that we can peel it, if you have a peel board, even better, we'll go ahead and dry this off, get all the dryer sheet off there. And open it up. Now we'll do just like we do any other back window, non-score pad, spray, squeegee, spray, get the film on, squeegee it out. Scrub a dub dub. There's the Honda Civic in my tub. Quick wipe down, X on, wipes off. Then we'll do a spray, squeegee, spray. Get any lint or dirt off of there that's on there from the towel. So we did the spray squeegee spray. We peel the liner. Spray the ground a little bit, static. Now, the film does tend to curl because of how much it has shrunk. So pay close attention to that. Definitely don't let it touch itself when it's dry. So we grab the film off the door, make sure the edges aren't folded. We're gonna get that top on first. Once we have that top lined up, we can kind of just roll it right into place, adjust it as you go, and voila. So once that's in place, double, triple check all the edges for any light gaps, and we'll start squeegeeing it with the H pattern. And then we'll go down the center, and then to the sides. Just make sure the film is completely spread out onto the glass and no pressure fingers pop up. Overlapping every stroke. Now with this I like to go straight up because you will have some fingers that need to be touched up. As you can see, that is totally fine. I just want to attack those quickly, so let's get this side squeegeed up. And you can see why I cut, I left this cut out completely straight, because even on this side it gets kind of annoying. You could end up grabbing it with the squeegee and it'll end up ripping the film. And we'll do a final shrink on these bottom pieces. A little spritz, a little heat, a little push, a little done. Once that's all done, we can start putting it back together. Um, I'll put it back together now. Usually I'll let it sit for a little bit, but we're doing this video, so we'll get that done. Once the wing's back on, you can still do touch-ups from the inside. The main reason we take the wing off is so that we can cut it and shrink it on the outside. Otherwise, it's impossible to shrink the film on the outside with the wing in the way. Impossible. I've tried it so many times. So, where do we start with putting this back together? Well, we can't put the motor on first because if we put the motor on first, then we won't be able to put that screw back in, right, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna put the wing back on first, because that's the last thing we kind of took off. 
the wing is covered by everything else, which is why we have to take everything else off first. So we'll put the wing back on first. Work in reverse. So to put this grommet back, we'll stick the wire in, get all the rubber in, get one side of the grommet on, and then kind of push the side in. It is a little tricky, but don't get too stressed out. Everything will be okay. Once you get one side in, you can take the gasket stick and just give it a final push. Line up the center hole and then the sides. Make sure that screw head is in the white plastic clip, I guess you could call it. Once it's in place, you can give a little pop. Done, done. You can open this up. Then I'll start by getting rained on. And I'm gonna put that bolt with the, the 10 millimeter with the washer on it back on the wing. Not too tight, you don't wanna over impact it. If you do have an impact gun, you'll break the glass. So we'll replug back in the brake light. We'll take the motor with the washer on there and that's the only thing that's on there. And put it in place, plug it in. Three 10 millimeters. We got the motor on. Let's just finish putting the wiper on to give that a call on the day of that. We'll need a 10 millimeter, which we have here and the vice grips. First thing we have to put on is this little plate with the hole in the center with the rounded part on the bottom. So it cups up, kind of like a bowl. Put that big nut back on. Doesn't have to be too tight. So we'll just give it a little twisty. That's good. Then we'll go ahead and put the wiper back on. Now the position that you're gonna wanna put it back in is so that when it's down, it lines up with this little line right here. So that, that's what that line is for, to line up the wiper blade. Now what I've noticed is you want it to be a little bit lower than that. Because when the motor engages, it actually goes up and then stops back a little shorter. Just the way it works for some reason. We'll put the 10 millimeter back on, tighten it. Not too tight. Oh. Before you put the wiper on, you actually have to put this plastic piece back on. So we'll go ahead and wiggle that off. Plastic piece on. It's like a little cone. Wiper on. Line it up a little bit below that line. 10 millimeter. And then this cap goes back on. Bam, bam. Then we can put the two 10 millimeters back in the wing itself. So once you have the top wing back on, we just gotta put the red piece on the back with the back of camera in it and the, the uh, hatch open switch. To put the switch back in, you just kinda dump it in the hole there. I'm gonna, the plug side comes up first. So I'm gonna go in like that. There's a little latch there. And then a clip, you just push it into place. Then we'll clip back on the camera and reroute this wire into the clips. They're clearly visible. Clip right back in place. And then we'll line up the clips. Give it a little smack. We can open it back up. And there was two 10 millimeters up in the top here, so we'll place those back in. Then we can put our taillights back in. Wire in, line up the holes. Give it a little tap. I like to plug it in before I screw it in, just to hold it in place, if it did fall out of place. Remember this slides on. Clips in. Eight millimeter. We have the silver eight millimeter inside. And then we have the four black, including the uh, camera piece. One, two, three, four black eight millimeters. 
Now with the taillights, you never want to over tighten these on any car. Just one little click with the impact. If you over tighten them, you can crack the housing and you'll get water in your taillights over time. Pop the taillight in. We got the motor in, the wiper on, the brake lights in, the center on, the wings on. Everything's plugged in. The only thing we have left is the big piece here. I like to line up the latch for the trunk first and then it kind of just falls into place. You'll feel the clips go in. Right. And then we have the four 10 millimeters. Then we can place these handle covers back on. Make sure it's for the right side. Just put it on. <laughs> All right, now we put these back on. Make sure that they line up with the holes and then you give it a one solid push. That's it. Before you do put these back on though, you wanna make sure that the wings on the clips are out because that's what holds it in place. Bam. That's it. So now for the side pieces, we have to get this hook on first and then we can wrap it around line up the clips give it a smack if we don't get this little hook on first then a panel will be popping off in that area and it'll be really hard to get back on and try not to peel the film yes. clip that on you can pull the main panel away a little bit wrap it around Smack it on. This center just goes in place. Make sure that we're clipped on there. Give it a quick wipe down. Go over the edges, make sure no fingers popped up. And that's it. That's how you tint the back window on the infamous hatchback Civic with the wing. See you guys in the next video.